If you want to save money on your trading card purchases, we have a promo link uh, over at 50cards.shop. Enter the promo code at night to get 5% off your order. Hey everybody, welcome to Nexus at Night, your weekly Vanguard podcast broadcast from my apartment for the last time. I'm Atlas. I'm I'm Matt. I'm Root Beer. Okay, well, th- their apartments, they continue to be yeah, in Yeah, we're still here. Okay, but the weird, like, box thing that I'm sitting in front of, that won't be a thing next week. I'll be in our new There'll apartment. There'll be many boxes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it'll I be in your a... new apartment, and it'll yeah. still be all in boxes. Yeah, it'll, it'll just be a fort. I just made a big... No, I, I I I believe in the I, be, I believe in the power of your better half to not to make that not happen. Look, if I manage to pa- like pack, I think I did maybe like eighty five percent of the packing. If I manage to do that in the space of a week, I I think I can unpack faster than packing. Hopefully. Anyway, um, <laughs> first time. <laughs> No, <laughs> and you and you know that for a fact, <laughs> Mister made me almost pee my pants. I'll do it again. <laughs> He'll just show up to your apartment bald, yeah. bald, and like <laughs> with his silhouette in the doorway. <laughs> God, whoever manages to keep up with the lore of this show, good for you, because it's, it's like what almost eight. We're coming up on eight years now, something like that. Oh mm-hmm. my God! Don't say it's that. Whack. Anyway, uh, yeah, today we're talking about uh, a tournament, um, what we want out of tournaments. So yeah. there, there was a tweet from at Rui Yang, the million dollar question, what do you guys want to see for upcoming events, better prizes, better player experience, and so on and so forth. Okay, I don't entirely know who this person is, but from context, I think they're a Bushi oh. Road employee. Let's see. Clicking on their profile just says "Legend of Hay" in there in Korea. Yeah. Um, so, but also possible. There, there was a tweet where they said they would like stop using that account and mostly just post on Bushi Road events. Mm, uh, okay. I, so I'm assuming based on that context that they are a Bushi Road employee. Gotcha. So that means that like the things that we say can possibly have an effect yes. on. Which means I will have to, under the Nexus at Night account, reply to that with, hmm. The, this is the first time in a while where I feel like we have any sort of pull. <laughs> but, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how much how much there would be, but mm-hmm. the one thing that always surprised me is how even by other card game standards, Vanguard pricing is pretty poor. Yes. That is the number one thing that stands out to me. Yeah. Remember, I think it was Springfest last year, how they like didn't have the mat the participation mats available and we had to like go through uh you had to like give them your address and like and go had- to a store and pick it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was something I had to do and then I had to mail it to everybody. Yeah. That was a that weird, is weird moment. So funny. Yeah. So like I think recently, in terms of like the promos they give out, they've been doing better because they're just like reprinting cards that people actually want. Mm-hmm. So I got my broken toys. Uh, yeah. And then in terms of like the actual prizing, yeah, like the prize cards are okay. Like I'll take the, what Bushiroad is doing right now over what like Konami does with their prize cards, which is something broken that you kind of need. Sort well, of, these or, days like... they're just printing vanilla monsters. Yeah. Um, I know for a time they did the like match winner ones mm-hmm. like Victory Dragon, although they stopped that around the time I was playing. When I was playing, you had things like Crush Card Virus, um, Dark End Dragon, the Synchro Monster, mm-hmm. where like it had a reasonably good effect that got around Stardust Minerva. Dragon. Minerva, yeah. So all that sort of stuff where like you you would reasonably want to use those cards, which means they were uber expensive. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. Like, One of them was just guy in hand for some reason. I couldn't tell you why. Mm. <laughs> that was after I left because I left like early season. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What what was up with giant hand? It was just vaguely playable sometimes. I see. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> the ballers. Yeah, the the worst the worst kind of playable to be honest. <laughs> like it's never a card that you're like, man, this card really made the difference. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a card to be like, it'd been kind of nice sometimes. Yeah. That, so dark, <laughs> so kind of like what Dark End Dragon was doing, where yeah. it was like reduce mm-hmm. your attack by five hundred, send something to the graveyard, which at the time was rather rare. Because almost everything was like destroy or banish. Yeah. Um, and Stardust was like prevents destruction. So being able to go, I send your Stardust to the graveyard was a big deal. Um, and it was good, but also like you didn't need it necessarily. Your deck wasn't built around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Boucher for the most part just gives out like the one promo and then like if you get into top cuts, there's usually like a top mat and then like a hot stamped promo mm-hmm. of like an existing card. So we've had like Eva, Luard. I'm trying to think of what else has been hot stamped. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like a good way to do prize cards. Something already mm-hmm. existing, but you have the little like the flare. So yeah. even apart from prize cards, like there's not even product as prize at Vanguard. Yeah. That I was about to say. Is- like, absolutely fucking bizarre when compared mm-hmm. to any other card game. Yeah, they don't even really give, like, participation packs. Yeah. Because, like, the... Well, it being a free entry tournament, I, mm-hmm. I assume they're not too keen on just being like, alright, here's, you know, packs from a box or whatever. Um, I remember, like, certain regionals for Yu-Gi-Oh! It was, like, five bucks, but you would mm-hmm. get a pack with your entry. So it was like, okay, that at least is a wash for itself. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if uh, uh, Boucher had wants to, you know, go over that line. Yeah. But... Although I will say this year, they did give out sleeves at uh, BCSs, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is fine. I think that's good. Yeah. Um... And they actually had the sleeves as opposed to like making us give our address to a store and then having to go to the store and pick them up. If I had to have sleeves mailed to me <laughs> and, not, and not like, you know, oh, I got these cool sleeves on, you know, 50 cards dot shop uh, promo code at night for 5% off. Anyway, uh, it, it wasn't like a cool thing that you got in the mail. It was like just regular ass Rika sleeves, Rika sleeves. Yeah, like just, <laughs> I have those sleeves somewhere. Yeah. I might just go get them. Hang on. For what? He's gone. gone. He's just he's, he's just gone. gone. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> he's just just three Takadachis here to keep us company. His uh is in, is insane laughing down the corridor is his ghost. Um maybe. Yeah, like with pricing, okay, Absolutely. so <laughs> I mean my my entire apartment is in boxes, so I can't really yeah, uh, but yeah, they gave us like the these. Same. Imagine, yeah. like, imagine if you had to like give someone your address just to have this mailed to you. Okay, so I don't quite understand the appeal. I don't know who that is. is? Yeah, like characters from the Vanguard show. It's a fraction of a fraction because like people who play the game might not watch the anime. Mm-hmm. So you're like, well, who the fuck is that? Why would I care? I having units on the sleeves makes a lot more sense. I think. Yeah. Being like, I'll trade you, uh, you know, Bastion sleeves for your Magnolia sleeve, whatever. Like, it, it, that would make more sense, I think, than having the people on it. And also, from there, you, you would also have to buy over sleeves mm-hmm. because those sleeves, you want to protect those. Yeah, because yeah. they suck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, character sleeves are pretty fucking bad. Okay, even if they don't suck, you still don't want to have to like buy more character sleeves. Yeah, that's why after some point I just stopped using character sleeves for anything. The only (laughs) thing I use character sleeves on are Great Nature, and that's just because I did before and just haven't like stopped doing it. You know, Mm. it's the same Magnolia stride sleeves since like 2017. I don't use that stride in my G zone anymore, but it's still there. Those sleeves are still there. Um. So, yeah, there's like the the question of do you continue with a relatively low point of entry and thus lower pricing, or do you do something like, um, do you have you guys paid attention to like the Pokemon TCG at all? Yeah. No. Um. So they have like a more complicated system when it comes to 
uh, prizing and to even like tournament entry and things like that. True. Where you have to like participate in what regionals to get access to the bigger tournaments mm. up there. And then in the bigger tournaments, you can get like cash. And yeah, Pokemon blocks. is really cheap to get into, but kind of expensive to play competitively because you have to travel to a lot of events. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's one of those things where whenever I see other like, VG tubers at events. I'm like, how are you guys able to do that? Like, like afford the t- like outer orange? They're spending, just they're like, they're spending their own money that they have. From yeah, their yeah. Job. just going everywhere on the eastern seaboard. Hi, orange. Mm-hmm. We love you. Anyway, yeah, I mean, um, this is the thing they this is yeah. the thing they spend their money for, right? Yeah. Like they're yeah. It is what it is. Honestly, like if our channel was bigger, I'd be doing it. Fair enough. Um, yeah. I know that uh, when California finishes high speed rail, it's going to be a lot easier. And then you can take the train down here without having to spend like 150 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So which, which system do you think is the better one to have like Pokemon's multi-tiered thing or do we keep it like low stakes? I mean, like like, personally, I would like them to invest more into the competitive scene. Like, it would be nice to have, like, bigger, more elaborate events. Especially because, like, they used to be better, I feel like. Like, we used to have side events. Side events that weren't, like, play six free fights and you get a promo or whatever. Yeah. Like, do you remember when they were still doing, like, the clan leader thing? Yes. I mean, even before that, they'd have, like, pods where, like, they would just play like, a quick... Mm-hmm. Uh, it was single limb eight person bracket to give away a mat. Yeah, which was at least fun just to like participate in little turn like little side tournaments at the very mm-hmm. least. Yeah, but I think how did the like clan leader thing work again? Like you had to fight other people with the same clan, and then I think like if you won a certain amount, they gave you a certificate that said that yeah. you were the clan leader. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Richard is gold paladin clan leader to this day. Uh, <laughs> a fact that he is probably I, I guarantee you if that man has children that's going to be like framed in his house somewhere that's <laughs> uh, yeah also do we want to go over like some of the other responses that were in that thread so that we can like bring up topics that we might not have thought of sure um i i just wanted to like mm-hmm. get through the prizing thing first and then yeah move on to and then any, anything yeah. to say about prizing or no, oh, about one prizing. last thing mm-hmm. is that uh, a a lot a lot of the so because they're free events, it means that there's not like they're losing they're probably losing quite a chunk of money hosting these events. This is something mm-hmm. that needs to be understood. Also, yeah, they got to yeah. pay the money to rent out the event space to yeah, you know, <laughs> etc. So, what would like what would make that make this worth their while? If that makes sense, mm-hmm. like they're already quite. Uh, stingy, so they're not yeah. like gonna cost themselves tons and tons and tons and tons of money for what? I imagine that the uh, the vendors aren't like theirs, right? It's just no. people who, you know, so it's not even like like they have the their current... own official shop, but yeah, but it's like usually merch and not mm-hmm. right arts, so. If that's your bag, great. But like for for people like me who are just there to play and see people, I, I kind of ignore it for the most part. Um, but yeah, but like I think the big thing I would like to see is like more like fun side events mm-hmm. than just like free play. And there's not enough judges to like oversee the free play because they're all still running the actual tournament. Yeah, like I, I like. Think... Go ahead. Uh, like. I like the clan leader thing. I thought that was like fun, but also just like Matt said, just having these like small single elimination brackets for things like sleeves and play mats, but they probably just have a bunch lying around anyways. Mm-hmm. Cause they do like raffle off stuff for their like store too. So like they could just run a tournament for that. I imagine if you put more effort into uh, this sort of thing, you could have like, even if it's older mats, you could have them signed by, by like tentpole people within this community. Like if you just have different mm-hmm. fights, sign a bunch of old mats, I guarantee you people would be down for uh, picking some of those up. Now, granted, he's on the other side of the world, so I get it. But, you know, something to be said there with uh, like 
investing more in your creators and your community. Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be cool. Um, so Richard that we mentioned from Nexus tour says more local events outside of just the semi-annual shop challenges and more prize distribution for top cut, i.e. top 16 if, if turnout is high enough. I don't think everyone needs a map, but I think players would like a promo that says top 16 stamped on it. Yeah. Like that's, that's a bad idea. Yeah. I, like I think some of their tournaments do get enough turnout for top 16. Like, uh, weren't one of our brackets like split in California, like split between like two sections because, or two yeah. groups because like, uh, was there were just so many people. Yeah. So that was, I think, BCS last year was yeah. that huge yeah so like clearly there was enough people for like a top 16 mm -hmm. there for like splitting it into two brackets so i mean i guess in that case we just had like two top eights which is basically the same thing right but like there's probably enough turnout that we can cut the top 16 yeah um deck flare another friend of our show uh says streamed events game is too hype not to have on camera um yeah, yeah. I know stream coverage has been pretty lacking. Like, if I remember correctly, like there is occasionally like stream coverage, but like sometimes it's just like people coming in and streaming it, like trying to get Bushiro's permission for that. And then like sometimes it's Bushiro doing it themselves and putting it on their channel. I think they do that for like their on like the online tournaments, but not really for like in person ones. If yeah, I remember like correctly. Yeah, like you had, um, well, okay, the the, uh, the remote fight tournament back when the pandemic was still like huge, and uh, I got my ass kicked at my mom's house. Yay, memories. Um, that was being live streamed. Like they would have like a random match, uh, you know, live streamed, and I think you could still kind of do that in person, where like due to the t like the you know people being shuffled. To whichever table pick a random table when you're setting everything up and just have it made for streaming so you have all the equipment there and then if it's like oh you're at table 26 great that's the streaming table your match is getting broadcast mm -hmm. and you just have that for the whole day um yeah. i imagine you would want to do that closer to the top of the numbers just as the pool gets smaller so yeah. you don't like, oh, like, the, it, it's table 26, but there's 24. Bracket, yeah, definitely. Whatever. Like, I know Konami has, like, feature matches like that mm -hmm. for, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! So, like, just you just grab one of the tables, like, all right, come over here to the broadcast table, and we're gonna, and you're gonna have, like, a feature match. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect, because, like, that also gives decks that probably aren't gonna top a, a chance to shine, too. Mm -hmm. Because, like, oh, you're playing OTT? Great. Like, yeah, let's, let's see how that goes. Come on over here. And honestly, like, if you see the way that people like DZ end up on these streams, like, they obviously just grab people the community knows, at that least for sense. some of them. At least, well, so classically in Magic, mm -hmm. uh, like, streams would, in fact, usually have somebody you know. So if you're a no name, like, you know, and you, mm -hmm. you're on camera round one, <laughs> you know, your opponent is probably pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. But uh, yeah, they usually grab people that are like important to like at least like mm -hmm. magic could be like important to a tour or some well known player, something like yeah. that. But mm -hmm. yeah, and then like and as you get deeper in the rounds, you end up taking people whose matches matter the most. At yeah. least ideally. Right. Because you're like, oh, this person's on a like four oh run run right. Yeah, five. or like this is the winning into top eight or whatever. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. that that would I think make a like first you have people watching the um the stream from like not that area people if you're you know it's bcs in california and you're in like indianapolis or whatever great i can use that to keep track of what's going on in addition to just kind of staring at twitter and waiting for people to be like this happened i saw yeah. this this dude over here and there's like not really a like cogent stream to look at there's mm -hmm. no like you ha you kind of just have to look at people who you know are there and see yeah. what they say as it goes on. Yeah, so I do think, like, 
what Konami was doing, where they just have like a table that they record at. And so they'll just like grab someone from a match to stream it is probably something that like Bushiroad could afford to do. Mm -hmm. I it, imagine that like usually for stuff like that, do you keep a like play by play and color commentator like you do, like we saw with worlds and things like that? Or would you just kind of keep it like straightforward? Th these are just the two people. Uh, you would have color commentary. Yeah. Um, Which does kind of complicate things a little bit because then you have to like find color commentators and possibly like bring them out. Hey, Bushi, stand up comedian, does a podcast. <laughs> I'm around. Come find me. I'll, are, you I'll to make, drop... are you trying to make them afraid of you? I'll drop right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drop round two if it means I get to do it. It's really fun. Like, I've done it for um, just like a, a sketch my friend was doing for like a sports thing. But um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's pretty fun. I, I I think that I could see myself doing that uh, in the future if they'd let me. And I know that's me just being like pick me, but whatever. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see, more uh, going on with uh, the rest of Deckflare's tweet. More side events, so having potential alternate slash old formats would be so sick. Yeah, like what Konami does with Time Wizard events. Like, we'd have to start normalizing, like, legacy formats, because there was the, like, G format that people do. Mm -hmm. But also, like... G-boot, as they call it, I think. Yeah, but they're also, like, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! gets a lot more granular than that, right? Like, they had Goat, Reaper... Like Edison, new plant Edison. Yeah. Um, I think with uh, with Vanguard, you would have to have Bushi seeking out the communities wherever they're able to find them, mm -hmm. and then being like, "We need to inflate your uh, like reach so that more people are interested, so that if we run this, yeah. you can do that." Like, I'd be curious what like slices of time we would use for like Vanguard Legacy format. Like, obviously, there's G format, but even like G format is kind of broken up into several distinct eras, right? Like, you kind of had early G format, which was just an extension of Legion for a really long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you had that like mid G era where everything was like a degenerate combo deck and probably a contender for like one of the worst times in Vanguard's history. So, you know, like you had Refros looping, you had like Time Leap looping. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think like the wise men loop came around during this time too. About, there was like yeah. all the really bad stall decks. Like, uh, I think like in hindsight, ripples was probably like could have been dealt with at the time. Mm -hmm. So if the second place deck played black boy, for example, let's see. Uh, continuing on, I would be willing to pay an entry fee five to twenty dollars for a better overall price support. We covered that, and then yeah, give fourth place a world's invite. Getting fourth feels terrible. Yeah, the fourth play. I mean, it. It. So here, here's the problem with this. I don't. I don't really right. care if fourth place is a world invite because it's like this. No matter how many world invites you give, the next person will be like, "This feels terrible." Mm. Yeah, getting fifth, getting sixth. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like at some point, it's like, what if we just gave the whole top sixteen a world invite? <laughs> it's whatever. I. I mean. I can understand, like, because it, because like, there's not really a difference between third and fourth, except like mm -hmm. you play a game, so you basically get to randomly determine who gets to go. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it. I can understand why it feels why it feels really bad at fourth. I assume they're just doing it like the the Olympics analog, right? Like yeah. metal, 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 yeah. and then fourth place, suck a lemon. You know? I mean, I think getting like bubbled out of top eight is especially frustrating for Vanguard events too, because sometimes there's just not enough rounds. Yeah. So there ends up being a bunch of people who are X1 that have bad enough breakers that are not in top eight or whatever. Mm hmm. But there's kind of issues that, I mean, if they gave, they, if I get, yeah, they can give it to fourth. Fuck it. <laughs> but also, whatever. Um, a lot of these are kind of the same. That's not going to change like most people's experience in the tournament, I don't feel. Yeah, probably At not. Adding a fourth place world's invite? Yeah. No, I don't think it would. It's a very um, specific scenario. Yeah. Um, I think if you were to like do G as a like um, 
you know, legacy format, probably what you would just do is kind of what they do with Edison, where it's that particular moment in time, like the end of G, but also it's got its own ban list. Yeah. I mean, that's that's more or less what, like, the legacy G format we have now is. Like, mm-hmm. I'd be more interested to see, like, what our definition of, like, GOAT format would be. Like, how far back would we, like, stop? In my head, I would think Legion, but I, I don't really know. I don't know. Sure. Like, Legion... Legion ended up being such a like, I would probably like end it before Legion, like at break rides. I feel like no one remember. Yeah, so the problem with like Legion as its own format was it was so short. Like, I'm looking at past tops just for like research purposes for other projects, and like there was maybe one. There's maybe like one section of events that like had Legion things, and then almost immediately went into G era. So like I would I would just treat Legion as like an extension of G era. Like that's I feel like most of Legion's relevance was like after the fact once they started printing all of the legacy legions during G. Yeah, or just like for most of the clans they got them as promos. You're like, here, take them. Yeah. We're moving on. Get on. <sighs> get on with our life. So yeah. Um, if we were going to do like distinct four, I would probably do I would probably cut off like our version of GOAT format like at the end of break rides. Mm-hmm. So that's what like BT15, I think. Yeah. If I have the number right. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know. Yeah. Cause I think the Bermuda set at the end of that still mm-hmm. was in break rides. Yeah. So. And like, I, I bra- honestly, I'm not really a big fan of break ride and like the the rhythm that the game had at that particular time and maybe i'll make a video you know, about like that. having seven different restanders at the top of the meta yeah it was like restanders and then just like kind of sitting there waiting mm-hmm. where you're like okay d- can i can i have my fourth damage yet because you couldn't even like self damage because it was a ride it wasn't like you know yeah uh, having to turn on limit break before that um yeah although like you still had like regular limit break cards that you were using too. Yeah, but like there there were times where like you just wanted to break the deadlock so bad you would just ride your thing on top of the break ride for no game just to like do something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't very common, but just like I'm an impatient person. So Yeah. That's how it I shakes think, out. Yeah. I feel like if we were gonna do like legacy formats for G, we could break them up into different eras. So mm-hmm. up to like I'd say up to about GBT three, we could probably make its own distinct format because four was when we got next stage. Yes. I don't know if like Gear Chronicles started being broken with next stage. I wasn't quite around yet. I know Gear Chronicles right. started being playable with next stage, and then it got mm-hmm. good in like six. No, uh, like um, five was when we, when they got Melum. All oh, right, Melum was five. I thought it was like a. Um... An extra booster for whatever. You're right. When when Melon yeah. when Melon came out, that's when it got good. I think it's much know. easier. I think I think it's much easier to do these formats at the end of particular eras. So if you're going to split up G, you'd want to do it like right before they got G, like right before G Guardians or right before X, like right before Zerath Dragons, right before. Mm-hmm. Okay, that like, makes sense. I think I think it's a little complicated to like try to like split it up at the exact point that you want or whatever. I think it's easier just to do it at the end of particular eras. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I also think that if they're going to do this kind of thing, th- what they should do is with the announcement of this, uh, you know, this particular tournament in these places they should have what side events are going to be there in advance because then you're going to have more people who maybe they don't want to play in the actual tournament and just want to be there for the side event right yeah some dude who's who's got his thing for you know the legend deck from like right before g guards came out and they're like all right cool i'll i'll head over there and like let's do it you know yeah also the other thing about butcher road events though is that they run like three different games at once Oh yeah, that's that's its own yeah. can of worms like, too. It's hard because like you don't want to leave Shadowverse out, but Shadowverse also does have its own tournament circuit. Mm-hmm. So it's like it is a little hard to like find space for all of Vanguard's formats while running alongside Weiss and Shadowverse at the same time. Mm-hmm. And luck and logic and buddy fight and shut the hell up. I mean, I think I buddy do, fight is like, the only. I feel like, a little bad saying it, but I do. 
Especially because they are doing a lot of crossover promotion for Shadowverse Evolve, but, like, I Shadowverse probably does just need to be its own circuit. Like, I feel like constantly shoving, like, different games into their tournament season probably doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. Like, it kind of works for Weiss just because there's three formats in two days. Yeah. I think if they are going to do something like that, then if they're going to, like, rent out the the space twice... It would then behoove them to do the like, okay, here's a tournament entry fee, Mm -hmm. and then you get a little bit more like bang for your buck there. Yeah, but then yeah, that does kind of suck for people who play like both, where they have to end up like choosing which game they want to do. Unless it's on two separate weekends, but yeah, you have to go down there twice, which is like, oh, gross. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, like own its own can of worms. I don't know what the like correct answer for that is. Mm-hmm. Just that, like having three separate games, one of which has three different formats, and trying to like find decent time for them is hard. Yeah. Um, is there anything that like that's small that you think that they could add that you want to see? Uh. Like, I don't care how insignificant it is, just something petty. I mean, like, their time management is still kind of iffy. The no 0123 just automatic double loss for both of them? Or, like, what do you mean? The double loss, definitely. But also, like, I feel like the times, like, between rounds and everything is, like, kind of inconsistent. Like, they're. Like, our experience has consistently been that they never start on time. Like, it takes forever to start. Yeah, we like, get there at like eight thirty and like eleven, nearly eleven. They're like, "All right, let's go." We're like, "Ugh, yeah, we're gonna be here till like ten p.m. or something." Yeah, like it's supposed to be five minutes between rounds, but it feels like it varies heavily. Yeah, uh, which like sometimes can't be helped with overtime and everything, but also, eh. and like they are still a little bit disorganized. Like we had a couple times where they had to reshuffle the tables. Right. Um, I don't so, remember like, that ever feel... happening in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, like, it feels like with Bushi Navi, they've gotten better with it, but it still feels like they haven't quite gotten the organization down yet. Right. Um, I think if, uh, if there's, like, something small, I miss the clan shirts that they yeah. used to have. And, like, just the clan stuff. Like, they, they have uh, nation stuff now. And I get Mm -hmm. it, that's your main format. But I really think, like, you could still move, especially on the premium day. Like, having, um, like, I had a a Great Nature sticker on the back of my computer for a while. And then I got a new, like, computer case and, you know, the sticker didn't come off. Um, So that's just gone forever. And, like, I kind of wish I got a, uh, like, a Great Nature shirt. And I, I think that that's... Cool, or just like you know, little stuff, right? Keychains, shit like that. I, I think that would move a lot because there's like a weird, almost hate to say it, nationalism <laughs> toward whatever clan some people happen to be playing, or just like fuck it, looks cool. I don't know. I I think they should bring that back, even if it's uh, outdated. Mm-hmm. What about you, Matt? Hmm. I don't know, the new format thing seems kind of not natural in a way. It's kind of like, because Vanguard is not a game that really lends itself to having different formats very well. At least not like specific formats. Minus the eras, of course, that we ended in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think the G format could be one, but I think like any cutting it down past that is probably not worth it. You don't think that they should go like Legion and before they should stay somewhere in G? No, I don't think it's think? worth it. Okay. Because then, then you run into a problem of card availability. Right. And I think with like V, where they insist on keeping it around, um, it's uh, if you ended up going back to that as like a side event thing, you could use that as the excuse, right? Oh, it's mm. V, this thing. 
um, and then not have to worry so much. I the like for Springfest where you had the three, uh, you know, different formatted teams. We we've done an episode on that already, so I don't need to go in too into detail. But I'm still not a fan. Yeah. Anything else we want to say before we wrap up here? I got two. No, I don't think so. I think we covered everything. All right. Well, uh, all that is to say that um, Bushi's done some good, it's done some bad, and there are definitely like things you can do. And you asked us, and we answered. So please uh, <laughs> get on with it. Again, um, the driving force here is dollar bills. Dollar dollar yes. bills, y'all. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Like um I think like a ten dollar entry fee for like better pricing and like side event structure is probably worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean for this yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um so yeah, uh that's that's our answer. So thanks everybody for listening. Thanks to Darren Cole, Josh, Jeremy, GR. Ali, and we have a new $10 patron um, that I am trying to remember his goddamn name, and I'm sorry. How could um, you? What? How could, How could you? you? How could I? Um, wait. Darren Cole, Josh, Jeremy, GR, Ali. Oh, wait. It was... So Tony D91. I'm just gonna call him Tony for now. So Tony. Tony Darren D. Cole, Josh Jeremy, GR Ali, and Tony. So thanks to all of them for being $10 patrons. If you want to support the show, patreon.com slash nexus at night. Five bucks or more a month, you get a whole ass bonus show with us every week. Um ten dollars or more, we thank you, and you get uh your your stuff uh you know the night before or our content the night before it comes out. Um and yeah, where can they find the rest of us? Uh, on Twitter, uh, we got two G's, two T's, as it says right there. Find me as Plasma Eclipse, which it does not say right here. Uh, find me at Atlas Novak, as it says right there in all the places. Um, and uh, you can follow my YouTube channel, The Epileptic Comic. My other podcast, Generation Dan, that's about generational differences, or my other other podcast, that's every other Monday on Generation Dan's RSS feed, which is called Last Minute History. So the new episode coming out this week uh, on the YouTube channel will be about uh, part two of the Bronze Age Collapse, the Sea People's Attack. So get ready for that. Um, I don't think I said it before, at Nexus at night on all the stuff. Um, so true. Yep. So thanks everybody for listening. And until next time, I was Atlas. I'm still Matt. I'm Root Beer. And have a good night. Everybody.